So you're working in an organization, you're tasked with upgrading your quarterly reports. Most of them look something like this. You want to make it a little more visually engaging. Maybe you want to uh, adjust it and change the visual design. We're going to go over some of the principles to do that. I'm going to take you through the whole process, start to finish. We're going to make something that just looks great here in Excel. So let's hop right into it and get started. Thanks for joining me, everyone. So the first thing we do whenever we get a report like this is just figure out what the heck's in it, right? We're looking at quarterly data for uh, sales volume and number of customers across different regions. It seems like the most important dimension here is the region that each of these is in, right? So we're gonna focus on that. We can see the kind of hierarchy of the metrics here, what they're focused on, and that gives us great guidance for getting started and figuring out what we wanna put in our version. So we're just creating a clean sheet here. I think in this example, we're going to give it a nice uh, dark background. First thing I do, I always block out my uh, design with rounded rectangles just to get a sense of where I want everything to go. Under the Insert tab, you can do that. You can adjust that roundness in the upper left-hand corner. Now, the first one I drop in, I just like to get the styling the way I want it on that one so that as we go through the whole process, we have something that we can copy-paste over and over. In this case, I'm just doing a nice glassy background. This is just a mostly transparent white background. It's just a cool effect I've been using a lot lately. Now we can copy paste this as many times as we want. We'll just have the exact same styling every time we paste it. And obviously we're using these rectangles to keep things organized. Organization is critical when you do these types of things. So something I notice on this original port, we have two core metrics here, our volume and our total customers. And then we have four segments for like geo segments, North America, Europe, Middle East, Africa, APAC and LATAM. Um, which are broken into fours. Now, we're gonna do a little bit of basic fractions here, which is to say these two metrics are highest up most important. So the top of the page is gonna have two main sections. So keeping that in mind, we're gonna have two main large sections for those two core metrics that are really important to us. And down here, because two and four both divisible by the same thing, right? We can actually then have four sections all perfectly spaced out, evenly separated. That's gonna account for all of the regions, all four of them, and our two major KPI categories. And we can make this nice and even and evenly spaced by going to the Shape Format tab and playing with the, the alignment options. We can just go and align this thing left, top, middle, and evenly disperse everything so that it's all aligned the way we want it to be. And I'm just gonna play around a little bit with the height, the layout, etc., just getting this to look and write so that it's gonna feel like an actual dashboard. Okay, cool, I like this. We got a decent layout to start putting metrics and text onto now. So I can tell here by the placement, the font size, all of that, that the original report is really emphasizing volume and customers. So I'm gonna drop my text boxes in here, just under the insert tab, you got a text box option. As you drop these in, you're gonna have to just clean them up a little bit. Text boxes have to have their background removed and their outline removed to make them look nice. I've left some placeholder values in here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and in our formula bar, point the value at a cell that is then going to autofill that. So here we are pointing it at the latest quarter's data. You can see that behind me, clicking and hitting enter. And now it's showing up here. You can't really see it, so we got to reformat it, get it up to the right size and everything. We're going to do the same thing with all our other values. Just hit equals in the formula bar and point them at the cell with the value we want. All right, just click, hit enter, and bada bing, bada boom. We got those values. We just got to format them. We're making sure to leave a little padding here just in case this number gets bigger. We don't want it to spill over and cover up the number behind it. I'm going to just copy paste in that rectangle on again and just using it as a little separator so we have a little division between the top and the bottom. And I'm just going to run over here. I'm going to highlight my, uh, my, my quarter names and the actual total values. I'm just going to go to insert and drop in a line chart. And maybe we'll make it a bar. Just cut that, paste it over and then get it all cleaned up. We're just getting it the right size, taking the title out, taking out our background, all that kind of stuff. Just get it nice and clean, choosing a font color we can actually see. Now in this case, I think I'm gonna give these bars a gradient fill, top to bottom, because we've been using these gradients a lot in this report. You know, I think that looks nice. I think it fits our whole kind of glassy look overall. I think it's a cool design, so we'll stick with that. Now I'm gonna go fast on this part, but we're essentially just gonna select all of this, copy paste it over, and then point all of the cells and charts at the correct values. So we're just, uh, like I said, we're just going into each of those, hitting equals and pointing it at the cell we want. And just like I mentioned before, we always gotta style these after we point them at a cell. For the chart, we're just clicking into the chart, going to chart design, hitting select data, and then we're just changing our cell references here to cover customers instead of volume. Super easy stuff here. 
Hit OK. And bada bing, bada boom. All updated. We got two identical cards showing our most important metrics. And always remember to label your data. That's under Chart Design, Insert, Data Label. Ta-da! Now we have to decide how we want to integrate these breakdowns by each region. I've got a few ideas for this, but we're just going to test out first. So I'm just going to copy this chart over. Okay, so I got those in. I just was doing some thinking here. We've got two breakdowns here. We've got a breakdown of all of our Q2 volume by each region, and then our customers in each region. Now, I like these broken down in a donut chart, but I think we're also going to need maybe a stacked area chart or something like that here to show that transition over time. And that leaves us an extra section on the right that I'm thinking we can use for maybe a horizontal bar chart that will show the comparison between Q1 and Q2 as well, or between this current quarter and the quarter last year. I'll show you what I mean as we hash through this. So we'll get everything styled here in a sec, but first things first, we just want to get these all in the right place, make sure we got titles and labels in there so people know what they're looking at, and we'll go from there. You'll see, you know, I copy paste whenever I can here. It's so much easier to copy paste stuff than having to restyle each bit of text each time, you know. So we got this great table already made for us, and we're going to turn this into an area line chart. I think that's going to be a nice way to show this off. Cut and paste it over, and we'll just get it formatted. Same as before, we just get it sized, get it cleaned up, take out our backgrounds, all of that, get it looking good, get our font updated. Okay, so hopefully you all can kind of see the direction I'm going here. We're going to take our Q2 volume overall breakdown and put that over on the left. To the right of that, we're then going to show it over time so you can see how that distribution changes as we go from one quarter to the next. It's going to give us a deeper insight than just the donut chart by itself. Then in this little section we have left over on the right, I'm thinking we'll show this Q1, Q2 comparison chart that was on the old dashboard so that you can see that change as well over that specific period. So now that I have this general layout figured out, I think I'm going to have to get in here and just start playing with some new series colors to make this all feel a little more cohesive because now our color palettes don't really match. Okay, so for color palette, I'm thinking I might do something like this. Um, this isn't perfect, but I think it might get the job done here. Uh, I've got a couple adjustments that I'll add, but overall I think this is going to work. To easily apply these color palettes and styles, I can click into each chart, go to Chart Design, under Change Chart Type, select Save as Template. So when I click into Charts, I can just go to uh, Templates and it'll be right in there. Just for kicks, I might add a little gradient fill on the bottom one of these things, blend a little better. We can even do the same thing on the uh, donut charts if we really want to make it all feel cohesive. All right, we're going to work a little magic over here with that Q2 volume chart, kind of make that a little easier to follow as well. And I think we got something pretty good here. So we zoom out. I think this hits the major points really, really well. It covers the main metrics right up top. Then we get into the nitty gritty. We show this trends over time a little more clearly. And we've got just a clear breakdown and it looks really fun too. And that's such a big part of this, something visually engaging that we want to look at, we're excited to look at, but also communicates effectively and gets the point across. All right, thanks for tuning in everybody. Hope that helps. Have a good one.